we are going to now, good morning students, we're now going to look at lesson 8.2 from the Life of Pi and the Poetry Collection. So we are now going to look at the Poetry Collection. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to listen to I am offering this poem, Jai Jimmy Santiago Baca. Okay, thank you for listening to the poem. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at question number one, interpret images. How does the photograph have, help readers to understand Baca's poem better? How does the photograph help the reader predict the meaning of the poem? So let's go back and let's look at the photograph. Okay, so let's look at the photograph. Okay, so what I see is I see a heart-shaped rock and I see it in someone's hand as if they are offering it to another person. Okay, so the poem says, I love you and affirms that love is all we need to survive and endure. Um, the rock is a symbol of solidity and permeance. The heart-shaped rock in the photo symbolizes the survival and endurance of love. Like the poem, it is offered as a gift. The heart-shaped stone in the photograph held by a hand represents the love that is being offered from one to another. The photograph tells the audience that the poem is about someone offering love to another. All right, beautiful poem. Let's go to The Writer by Richard Wilbur. Okay, so let's go to The Writer by Richard Wilbur and it's down here. I want you to pause the uh, want you to pause the video and I want you to listen to The Writer by Richard Wilbur. Okay, so let's look at the question. The question examine symbols. Give details with nautical or maritime associations. How might these details derive from the speaker's feelings about his daughter? Why might the author have included these details and why do the cargo and the passage and what do the cargo and the passage symbolize or represent in the poem? And how does the author use how does the author use symbols rather than stating the meaning outright? Okay, so we're going to look at question number one. We're going to look at the nautical or maritime. And I have to be honest, I had to look up some of these words. So a prow is the front of a ship tossed with linden. Okay, sometimes you toss around in a boat. Um, a gunwale is the upper edge of a ship's side. So like a chain hauled by a gunwale. Uh, cargo is carried on a ship. And of course, when we uh, have someone who goes on a cruise or they're going on a ship, we say have a happy passage. So a lucky passage. So let's go back and let's see what all this means. Okay, a prow tossed like a chain hauled over a gunwale, great cargo and lucky passage. Wilbur's use of figurative language of nautical origin applies to his daughter's imminent voyage through life. She is young and ready to set sail. The speaker wishes her a lucky passage. Many of the nautical symbols apply to the daughter's journey and Wilbur, Wilbur talks of her room at the prow of the house, her typewriter sounding like a chain hauled over a gunwale and he recalls the starling beating a smooth course, a sailing term for heading into the wind. By adding these details, Wilbur intends to show how the world is transformed by the prospect of the voyage. Okay, students, what I want you to do now is I want you to examine each of the, I want you to examine all three of the poems and answer the close three questions. I think it will take you about maybe 10 to 20 minutes to read over these poems and look at them. If you have any questions, please remember that I'm here. Bye-bye.